This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbil Mac, a better wood planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Today we're gonna test how efficient Tesla is by testing this Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive. As you guys requested, this is probably most relevant in, down in the continent, in Europe. In Norway, they want the overdrive, but uh, we have seen before that the rear wheel drive, even if it's Tesla, is in fact more efficient than the all wheel drive. So, can we go below 120 watt hour per kilometer? Well, let's find out. So yeah, it's the Highland and the Highland has improved uh, aerodynamics versus the pre-Highland. So before, it was 0.23 uh, drag coefficient, and now it's 0.219. So that is uh, better, of course, especially today where it's a bit windy. Well, yeah, and we also have uh, 18 inch wheels and Bridgestone Turanza. And these are original tires from Tesla. So, uh, yeah, uh, the rotor, okay, whatever, uh, but uh, should be efficient also with these uh, hubcaps. And the inside looks more or less the same as the others, except for that I have added sexy button here and here. Oh, oh, there. There, yeah. So first I consider maybe adding some stocks, but you know, that's more, uh, more expensive uh, and extra work. Buttons are easier, you know, and cheaper. So, uh, well, I could just borrow from uh, my sponsor, Bil Componente, but I just chose these because I just happened to have them. And it actually improves the driving pleasure a lot. So I also have, yeah, I have the commander connected so I can see some canvas data about how many kilowatt hour we have left. So this is just the LG battery. We don't have to test the full battery. We know it has 73.74.5 kilowatt hour from 100% to 0%. So we will just measure the consumption. So I'm going to show you how smooth Tesla is. Look, look at this. Look at this. You zoom out on the map, it, it goes super smooth. This is how it should be, right? With modern cars now with, it, with, with alien technology computing. So we're going to go to Tongan, it's just right here. Don't want to navigate to any chargers because then it might preheat the battery like this. Yeah, all right. Uh, let's get ready. I'm going to reset some trips here and then off we go. Well, we're on the move. We are doing the 120 test first. I have to cruise 122 to match 120 GPS speed. When it comes to wind, oh, okay, actually not that much wind. That's great. Oh, on the way back though. There is a bit of slowdown. Uh oh, I didn't know that beforehand. So I might have to compensate by going slightly faster. But it seems to be a relatively short stretch. Uh, otherwise, I just skip this. Oh, 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 we have uh, slowdown down also on this side. Uh oh. Okay, we have to move the starting position slightly because of the Baustelle. So let's see, we were there. So here we just push it slightly further and then we reset everything and then we try again and we do this loop instead. So then we should be able to go full speed there. And wow, I tested Uniper lately, which is you know, Model Y, the refresh Model Y. And when I got back in the Highland here, I feel like the Highland is slightly noisier than the Uniper, even though we had 20 inch wheels on the Uniper and 18 inch wheels here. Unfortunately, I was not able to test the noise level on the Uniper, but uh, at least based on my butt feeling, I think Uniper is quieter. Wow! Okay, maybe next time I'll be able to test it. But then, when it comes to the ride, I feel like the Highland ride and the seating position is better. It's more, you know, laid back. Uh, Uniper, you sit more upright. So yeah, here, oh, super comfy. And autopilot here is working. And look at this, Tesla brought back the decimals in trip meter. Yes, awesome. But they didn't just do that. They also added decimal in the consumption. We have highly uh, precise numbers now unlike any other car in the, in, in the industry. So now we have 166.9 watt hour per kilometer. That would equal to, okay now, 16.71 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer. You don't see that anywhere else than in Tesla. Wow. And that is actually quite low consumption also. And then we have also other nice features like this. Weather animation. Well, right now it's nice weather, but uh, normally you will see rain animating here. Super useful to see what's going uh, ahead. 
and also we have this the weather forecast this was a feature uh, well out a while ago but also notice another nice feature if we go here to seats you can now adjust the driver uh, the, the passenger seat here but okay well wait maybe I, I might have to be stationary to do that uh, well that's why we need the sexy button or the stock or whatever uh, knob then you can adjust while driving also every time you change lane you have to disengage all the pilot but I've set it so that it automatically re-enables see you just change lane wait a couple of seconds and then it re-enables what the heck is this sorcery well it's one of the many many features you can enable in the uh, commander or that comes with a sexy button or stock or knob so okay it no, it's not as good as the auto lane change that you get but you have to pay for yeah, with a enhanced autopilot but this is actually good enough for most cases so it's like the poor man's enhanced autopilot huh awesome and remember that this is the poor man's tesla because it's a rear wheel drive not the dual motor so yeah if you don't get my poor man's joke then you must be fun at parties well we're heading back now and now we're going to get back to the starting position and as always tesla shows you how many percent you will arrive with here 82 percent it always shows you here in the navigation screen so you don't have to dig into the sub menu this is really great but tesla te takes it one step further if you click on the energy graph here you see that you get high information high details about how it calculates things and it takes in account weather you know like wind or temperature speed limits uh also adjust based on the, the actual consumption now you know corrects for it and it even shows it here with the highest precision that we will arrive at 81.4 percent so recently in my 1000 kilometer challenge i managed to nail, nail down and get over to a supercharger with 0.3 or 0.4 percent so only tesla has this highly advanced estimation and it's also super accurate and as long as it's super precise then you can trust it other systems has something maybe similar like this percent at arrival it's useless it keeps missing the target all the time and then it's bad and you won't trust it but here it's just top notch you know when i say that tesla have the best software it's based on many of this i only show you guys the tip of the iceberg of why tesla is so awesome but you know how it is all the haters Bjorn, i like your videos but you're just a tesla fanboy that's why you always claim that tesla is so good well first of all i have sold my tesla a long time ago i don't own a tesla anymore. I, I own an eagle i'm e eagle Bjorn. and also when it comes to tesla referral program well we don't get that goodies that many goodies anymore and they have a limitation so i get referrals but maximum 12 per year and I normally reach 12 referrals in January or February, which means that past that point, now it is June, then the, I have no incentive to promote Tesla because I don't get any benefits from it. So, um, yeah. So actually, I praise Tesla because they are good on software, but they are not so good on other things like a juniper i forgot to mention it they removed some usb here uh, one usb c in the center console and they also removed the option to choose if you want to double click to enable autopilot or single click to enable uh, cruise control adaptive cruise control like all the other teslas like this car can you know you you must choose in the menu if you want to always enable autopilot or always enable cruise control why and there's also a bunch of other weird quirks that tesla has introduced lately so yeah uh but you know what reality check a bunch of other brands that i test they also have weird quirks and limitations on things mostly software right uh, but you cannot fix any of that but enhance 
you plug in something in the OBD port and you can actually change some of the behavior of the car, which improves things. And you might say, oh, but this hacking is dangerous. Well, it doesn't void the warranty. And also, uh, enhanced guys, they, you know, they made some features, like you press and hold the door handle to unlock the charge port or to open the front. Well, Tesla recently made that a, a feature in the car, you know, that you get in the car. They copied Tesla, I mean, Tesla copied Enhance, but it must be in that it's a good feature and they actually want it. So, yeah, I hope other car manufacturers will uh, consider, well, wait, what can they do? No, Enhance needs to eventually make a commander for other brands. Maybe MEB, I will be talking about MEB if it's possible, because it covers so many brands. Yeah, so we'll see then, if it's possible or not. Oh, hello, Uniper, eh? Nice boatload. Uh, uh, probably from uh, uh, Giga Berlin. Just a bunch of white Unipers. Uh, awesome cars. Uh, awesome indeed. Okay, let's get back in here. All right, the consumption for this test, 158.9 watt hour per kilometer. That is insanely good. Okay, this car overports distance by 1%. I measured it before in 1000 kilometer challenge. It means that uh, the real consumption is 1% higher, but it is just insanely good. Like other cars doing 90 kilometers per hour will have this consumption. So we can also verify that the speed was high enough. Okay, let's try 90 test and see how low it goes. Okay, so now we cruise at 92 on the speed though. That's 90 GPS speed. That is a bit weird because most Teslas, I will cruise at 91 only. It's always just one kilometers per hour off. But you've seen in many of my other 90 tests or the range tests is that I normally have to cruise at 93 on the legacy automakers with much 90 GPS speed. But Tesla, they have highly accurate uh, speedometer. But of course, this could also vary based on the tire pressure. We can also check the tire pressure here, just swipe it. Uh, very nice that it actually shows you recommended. This is the same thing that uh, is in the inside of the door. So it is a bit high now, of course, because we've been hammering it, yeah, hammering it in the high speed test. And it's uh, nice and warm outside, 21 degrees Celsius. So that's why I'm wearing my Schwartz today. Yeah, oh, my hairy legs. You like them, huh? Oh, yeah. Get in my belly. All right, we're done with the 90 test. And wow, look at this. 112.6 watt hour per kilometer. And it's even not that hot outside, 19 degrees Celsius. I'm just blown away by how efficient these cars are, man. Okay, we have to do all the corrections and then I'll calculate the range. I'll check the weight of the car. Front axle. Oh, they need to fix that display. Uh, 900 kilograms. The whole car. 18... 140 kilograms. Wow, that is light and nimble for 82 kilowatt hour rear wheel drive. Huh, interesting. I checked the old data and the rear wheel drive, uh, well, or the standard range plus, or you know, whatever, the 60 kilowatt hour rear wheel drive is 20 kilograms heavier than this 82 kilowatt hour because LFP battery has lower energy density, so the battery is actually heavier. But yeah, I heard now that there's also a new 60 kilowatt hour, which is around, don't remember, 63 or something. Maybe we need to test that eventually. But um, okay, so based on th you know, this test versus the other rear wheel drive Highland that uh, is relevant, then we have almost the same weather conditions. And that Highland is also very efficient actually spot on in 90 test and then slightly more efficient 120 test. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe I was stuck behind some slow pokes or something. But uh, yeah, this test shows that these rear wheel drives are super efficient. Unmatched performance or I mean efficiency in this 
class or whatever. Not that many cars are like this, you know, sedans, whatever. But compared to, for example, BYD Seal, okay, well, they don't have any regular. Uh, yeah, but something similar, uh, nothing can match the, the efficiency. And because of the good efficiency, then you get also really awesome range. So you don't have to have a big battery, you know, or you don't need, actually need to fast charge that fast because it's like a classic Ionic. Yeah, needless to say more about it. So yeah, eventually I'm going to do a Sunday drive tomorrow. Then we'll see, can we go over 700 kilometers? Hmm? Can we hit 100 watt hour per kilometer like the classic Ionic? Well, there's only one way to find out. Do the actual test. So, you know, I thought that, okay, this car might have a disadvantage over the LFP battery, the smaller battery, you know, but it is actually lighter. So then it boils down to the tires, right? Or some other conditions. But yeah, that's going to be for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.